So when constructing a phylogenetic tree, there are two different routes we can take. We can either construct a phylogenetic tree based on morphological data or with molecular data. In morphological data, we are looking at the physical characteristics of a species. So we may be observing whether or not a species has hair, or if it has feathers, or if it has no hair or feathers. Those are physical observable characteristics that are considered uh, morphological characteristics. But when we take into account molecular data, in molecular data, we are looking at the DNA. We are looking at the specific nucleic acids, their positions, and we're comparing them to different species to determine how closely related these species are to one another. So over here, we're given a general data set. We have eight nucleotide positions, and we have an outgroup, and that outgroup is being compared with four different species. So these four different species have eight nucleotide positions, and in each position we see a nucleic acid. We either see A, G, C, or T. So if we are given this general phylogenetic tree and asked to determine where the base changes occur, in order to determine where those base changes occur with this given data, we have to follow four steps. And step number one is to identify the nucleotide positions with uniform bases. And by uniform bases, we mean uh, all the bases are the same in all the species. So if we take a look at nucleotide position number one, we have GGAAA. Those are two different bases. We have uh, G and we have A. So that is not uniform not because all uh, of the species must have the same base. And that is not present in nucleotide position number one. If we go over to nucleotide position number two, it's the same. We've got A, T, G, G, G. It's n so the bases are not the same in all of the species. So this also does not apply to step number one. If we jump over to nucleotide position number eight, we can see that all of the species have C, the base C, at position number eight. So it is uniform. We see the same base in all the species. So that applies to step number one. Now, once we've identified which nucleotide position has uh, the same base in all the species, we can cross that column out. That column is irrelevant to our phylogenetic tree because this base C is present in all the species. So we do not need to plot uh, that base onto our, onto our tree. So once we've identified and crossed that out, we are gonna go to step number two. Step number two is to identify the nucleotide positions with a single base change, and it must be a uniform base change. Now this can get a little tricky. So if we take a look at nucleotide position number one, we can see that we go from GG, A, 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 okay? So we were, we had G, but now we're A. And once we became A, we stayed A, okay? So this is a uniform change because once that change occurred, that change remained present in all the species to come after. So we had this ancestor that, con that changed from G to A, and that change remained in all of its descendants, okay? So this applies to step number two, okay? So in step number two, nucleotide position number one is applicable. Now, what do we do with this information? Okay, so we see that we are going from G to A. Now, what's important to note here is that whenever we're plotting this tree, we are comparing the outgroup to all of the other species. So if we're going from G to A, which species are changing? B, C, and D. 
B, C, and D are all going from G to A. That means we have a common ancestor, which is right over here, because this common ancestor includes B, C, and D, and this common ancestor has this change from G to A. So that means we would have a, we would have a change occur at nucleotide position number one, where we are going from G to A. We're going from G to A because we're comparing the out group to the species that are undergoing the change. So we've plotted our first change. It's at position number one, we're going from G to A. Now, do we have any other nucleotide positions that are applicable to step number two? Well, we can check. So nucleotide position number two, we've got A, T, G, G, G. So those are three changes, but we're looking for a single change that is uniform. So column two does not apply here because we have three changes. Column number three. In column number three, we have T, A, G, C, C. Now we have four different bases here. We have four different bases, but we want a single base change. So this column number three also does not apply. Now let's look at column number four. In column number four, we go from C, 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 C to T. Now this is a uniform change because we had all C's and then it became a T, okay? This is a uniform change. It is occurring at nucleotide position number four and only one species is affected by the change and that is species D. So where would this change be plotted? This change must be plotted over here because this change is only affecting species D. If we plotted the change over here, it would affect species C and D, but we only want species D. Okay, so that means at nucleotide position number four, we are going from C to T. We write the C because the outgroup is C, and we are always comparing it to the outgroup. So we're going from C to T, and only species D is affected. Okay, so next, we do we have any other uh, column that is applicable to step number two? So if we go to column number five, we have A, 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 T, T. This is also a uniform change because we had all A's and then we got a change and that change was present in all of the species to come after. Okay, so which species are affected by this change? Species C and D. So where would this be plotted? It would be plotted right over here because we want species D, C and D both affected. So where is this change? Uh, this change is occurring at position number five. So at position number five, we're going from A to T. All right, so it was A because we're comparing it to the outgroup, and then we're going to T. Now, is there any other column that is applicable to step number two? This is where it gets tricky. So column number six, we have G, 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 A, G. Now, we could say that, okay, we only see one change and that change is happening at species number C, but we have to remember that the change must be uniform. So if a change occurs in a species, that change must be present in all of the species to come after. So in order for this, in order for step number two to apply here, we, it must be AA. But since it's AG, the change is not no longer uniform, so this does not apply to step number two. Now, if we take a look at column number seven, we see the same thing going on. We have C, T, C, C, C. Now, since we see that change occur right here, that change must be uniform in all of the species to come after in order to be applicable to step number two. So column number seven does not apply. So for step number two, we, ha we had three plots. We had this plot, we had a plot at, at number five, and we had a plot at number four. So now that we've completed 
steps number one and two, we can move on to step number three. And so far we've taken a look at column number eight, we've done four and five, and we've done number one. So we're left with four columns. And in step number three, it is saying, identify nucleotide positions with two base changes. So this is the tricky one we were talking about earlier. So in column number six and seven, we discussed that the change was not uniform. So we see that we went from G, 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 A, then to G. So this is where column number, well, this is where step number three applies, because step number three is saying there's two base changes. That means that we see a change occurring, but then we see another change occurring within the same two base pairs. So over here, we went from G to A, but that change was not uniform in all of the descendants because we went back to G. That is the two base changes we are talking about. So, so column number six is applicable to step three because we went from G to A and then A to G. Column number seven is the same deal. We go from C, T, so a change occurred. We went from C to T, and that T change was not uniform because the descendants changed back into C. Okay, so this is the two base change because there is a change occurring, but then we're changing back. So steps, uh, so columns number six and seven are applicable to step number three. Columns number two and three are not applicable because we have more than two bases. We have A, T, G, so that's three bases. This is T, A, G, C, that's four bases, but we only want two bases. So how do we plot six and seven? So we have to remember that whenever we're constructing a phylogenetic tree, we want to uh, construct it in the most parsimonious way. We want the most simplest uh, construction of a tree. And instead of saying, oh, uh, uh, we're going to have a change occur over here. Um, so if it, so we can see that we're going from G to A and then we're going from A to G. So if we were to say over here at position number six, it's going to be from G to A, but then species D is going to be going from G to A. So we'd have two different plots that makes things complicated. That's not the most parsimonious way. Instead of having two plots, we can just have a single plot and we can simply say that only species C is undergoing the change. So what we would do is we would put a plot over here and we would say at position number six, we are going from G to A. And that is the most parsimonious way to plot this. The alternative method I was saying was that instead of writing this out, we would say, okay, we're going from G to A. So we would put G to A over here, but then over here for species D, we would have to say that we're going from A to G. Two plots is not parsimonious. A single plot is more parsimonious. So instead of saying these two combined, we're only, we're only, going to be saying at position number six we are going from g to a for species d i mean for species c okay and then for number seven we're going to do the same thing we see that we're going from c to t and species a is affected and instead of putting the plot over here and saying okay we're going from c uh, we're going from C to T and then over here say that okay we're gonna go back from T to C instead of saying this we're simply gonna say we're gonna say that only species A is undergoing the change and that we're gonna go from C to T at position number seven okay so what we're doing is that instead of plotting two points, we want to plot a single point to make it the most parsimonious. So this is what we have for columns six and seven. So for the last step, it says to identify 
uh, identify nucleotide positions with more than two changes. And as we've mentioned already, nucleotide position two and three have more than two changes because we have three different bases in two and we have four different bases in position number three. So positions two and three are very straightforward. Essentially, you just plot whatever you see. So, for example, we know that at position number two, we're going from A to T. So we would say we would have to put it over here and it'll make sense in just a second. So A to T, but we see that it becomes T to G for the remaining three species. So for the remaining three species, B, C, and D, we would have to put a plot over here that says two T to G. T to G. So what's happening? We're saying at position number two, we're going from A to T, but that position number two goes T to G for the remaining three species. Um, for position number three, we do the same thing. So I'll put this in purple. So we're going from T to A. So we have a position over here, position number three, T to A. But then it goes A to G over here. It'd be A to G. And then lastly, it goes G to C for the remaining two species. So the remaining two species are C and D. So at position number three, we're going from G to C. So whenever you see a nucleotide position that has more than two changes, you plot whatever you see. So for position number three, we went from T to A, A to G, G to C. For position number two, it was A to T, T to G. And here it just summarizes the entire tree. So to quickly go over, the first thing we did was identify nucleotide positions with uniform bases and cross it out. We did that, so uniform bases, we cross it out. Uh, I, step number two is identify nucleotide positions with a single base change. So single base change right over here because it's uh, we go from G to A and then that change is present in all of its descendants. Uh, this step, uh, nucleotide position number four is also a single change. And then we go to step number three, which says to identify two changes. So for two changes, we see position number six, position number seven, and position number five is applicable to step number one because there's also a single change present in all the descendants. And then lastly, two and three, they apply to step number four because we see multiple changes. And whenever you see multiple changes, you directly write them all out in your phylogenetic tree. And that is how you uh, plot a phylogenetic tree based on nucleotide position information.